Welcome back aliens, my name is Avind Reddy and let's talk about fast API. So when you work with Python, you can do multiple things with Python. You can use Python to build console based application. You can use it for the GUI building. You can use it for web framework. You can use it for AI. And of course, for different things, we got different libraries, different frameworks. But now we are talking about fast API, which is a web framework for Python. And this is not the first option. We have multiple frameworks available for Python. Uh, we got Django, Flask, and now we got Fast API. In fact, we already have a Django series which was created five to six years ago. And now I should have gone for Flask and then Fast API. In fact, Fast API was never in the option. I wanted to explore Flask, but then I looked at Fast API and thought, I thought, hey, that's simple, uh, easy to go with, and it works. And the most important thing is it has this amazing features, which we're going to talk about now. So let's head towards the homepage of Fast API. Now, before we talk about Fast API, I want to show you the project which we are going to build to start with, okay? And maybe later on, we'll update this project mode, we'll add more features based on what fast api has to offer okay now this is a simple page because i wanted to explore crud operation and this is what we are going to build now hold on using python and using fast api we can build a back end and you are looking at the front end now the front end is actually in react and no we are not going to learn react in this course this imagine this page or this front end is already created now to make it work you have to build a back end for it Okay, uh, example, if you talk about these things, whatever you're doing here, this data is coming from the backend. So the database which you're going to use is Postgres, but you can use whatever you want. The backend, we are going to use Python and the framework is fast API and the front end is in React. So we are going to skip the React part. You will get the code as it is the entire React application. You just have to build the backend and run, it will work. I mean, it should work. Uh, based on your configuration. Now, what we're trying to build here is, this is a simple inventory application, nothing very fancy. And I don't want to launch my own startup for this. Uh, simple application, right? Now, in this, we got our products here, and which in which you can see we got list of products. And then uh, I have an option of sorting this. Of course, this is a React part, nothing to do with the backend. But what is there in the backend? This data is coming from the backend. And you can edit this data. You can see if you click on edit, it is changing here. Again, the part of front end, but the actual saving or updating of data is happening in the back end. Uh, I can add a new product here. I can just simply say refresh. Okay, now this is something. This is the first time I'm looking at this bug. Not a bug, but then how will you go to add now? Okay, I should have done that before. Okay, so refresh the page. There's something I need to update in the front end as well. Anyway, the point is, let's say if you, if you got this front end, I want to add the ID, which is let's say five and uh, I want to say, let's say Asus laptop, description, budget laptop, price is let's say 999. Uh, and then quantity is let's say we got 12 quantity and add. And you can see it just got added which is, which is here. Now this is the entire front end. You can search for the product. Example, if you say a laptop, it will show you the laptops, right? Again, this is a front end functionality of searching, but then uh, when you search something, okay, this filtering, we should not be using that. Maybe I should be doing that with the help of ID. So if I say three, you can say this three. So this is basically can be done through the backend as well. Uh, what else you can do? You can delete the item. So this is a backend feature. So if I click on delete pen, because I don't want cheap products in the inventory, I'm just kidding. Pen is very important. Uh, and you can see it is got, it got deleted. Okay, simple stuff. Now I want to show you the backend for this. And this is the entire code repository, which I'm going to share with you. So there's a front end folder, which you can see here. And the back end is this files. Uh, not the perfectly optimized code for the production, but we are not doing for the production now. We are basically learning a framework, right? So this should make sense. And now let's head towards the home page of Fast API. And this is it. This is Fast API, and they are claiming it's a fast API framework. It's high performance, easy to learn, fast to code, and ready for production. Uh, out of this, I have tested for easy to learn, fast to code, and ready for production. I have not tested for the high performance. But if they are claiming it, and a lot of people are using it, so it should be. Okay, now if you want to read documentation, you can read it from here, and that's the home page. You can just look at for the documentations here. And Fast API is modern, fast performance. Again, I have not tested it, but it's very easy to work with, and you will see that. When, when, when we do that. Okay, so very uh, very high performance on par with Node.js and Go. Okay, that's what they're promising. Uh, faster code, we have seen this, fewer bugs, and 
Okay, other thing looks good. Now this is what Fast API is promising. So Fast API is basically a web framework, and we are going to do this step by step. So the first thing we need to do is, in fact, there are some prerequisites. Uh, you need to know Python, of course. We are not going to teach you Python in this course, so you should know Python. You need to basically understand how basically a web framework works. And in, in fact, I'm going to give you a glimpse uh, what happens when you communicate from a client side or whenever you access a particular web website how it works, but having that knowledge pr prior to it will be helpful, but don't worry, I will talk about it as well. And uh, that's it, you don't. You need just two things. Uh, in terms of software to do this, you need to have Python installed in your machine and a editor, now, or the IDE to be specific. Now you can use uh, IDE like PyCharm for Python, or you can use VS Code or any other IDE which you like. We are going to use VS Code here because for PyCharm, uh, it will be bulky and not everyone will be having it and people are getting used to VS Code. So let's use VS Code in this course and maybe in between I will show you how do we run this in PyCharm. Okay, let's, that's a separate thing. But initially we'll start with VS Code and there's certain things which we have to install and stuff. Yeah, initially there will be learning curve but once you get used to it, it's very easy. Okay, cool. So that's about the introduction for Fast API. Apart from this, uh, make sure whenever you watch the upcoming videos, don't just watch the videos, practice them because practicing is very important. Otherwise, it's of no use. And uh, go through the documentation. You know, in case if I miss something, just go through documentation and you'll be good. In fact, I wanted to add one disclaimer. The UI which you're seeing here is it's created by AI. Okay, so uh, if you find any glitch here, you can blame the AI. If you love it, I did it. I, I did those prompts with the AI, so <laughs> cool. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy this series and uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.